Hey everybody, uh, welcome to lesson 21. I am your host, Mr. Budamalch. Uh, you can see me, hi. Uh, and today we're going to be focusing on the role of women after World War I. So now we're transitioning after our exam, right? We, we're learning about like the effects of World War I upon the nation. Yesterday we learned about um, the flu epidemic in 1918. And today we're focusing in on how women's role uh, in society changes and how like the definition of like to be a woman um, changes for many, stays the same for others, um, but it's showing that society is starting to change because of this aspect of World War One. So what I want you to do, some of the things we're gonna be talking about is a little similar, uh, the stuff that we talked about during the progressive era, some not. Um, we'll be getting into, again, like the uh, aspect of the 1920s uh, for the first time or the roaring 20s. Um, so what I want you to do is, uh, you're going to do a do now. Uh, this poster is uh, in a PDF on your assignment, and you're going to answer this question in your notebooks. So please don't tell me, like, where do I put this or message me. It's in your notebooks for your notes. Okay, and what is the major message of the poster itself? What is actually the poster trying to highlight? Uh, get back to me after you're done uh, working on it. Thanks. So, yeah, um, so this is focusing on, on uh, women's right to vote, and specifically... We had looked at this and this aspect of women's right to vote uh, during the progressive era that we looked at is going to be something that during World War One is happening, even before World War One, to be honest with you, um, and even before that, actually, it's been been going on actually since really the the development of actually the country itself of women um, trying to achieve equal rights, obviously, um, but but even in the aspect of like the voting rights in general. Um, this is a continued fight that women were continuing to fight constantly. And, you know, it seemed like a good time because if Wilson is now saying that, hey, we're going to fight for other nations to have democratic freedom. The question is then that women have are, you're fighting for them. But what about American and uh, women uh, in the aspect of, I use American in the aspect of, uh, of U.S. Uh, citizens that are women like you're fighting for you know France to be liberated and to be democratic and to save the world but what about women and you know these 12 reasons are pretty clear that why women believe that they should have the right to vote and one of the biggest ones is uh, laws affecting children should be regarded from the women's point of view as uh, they were for a man in the sense that um, they are the ones that are creating these new citizens it is it is an extremely difficult thing to be a parent, let alone raise a citizen. And guess who is the, the, the ones at this time that were doing it? It was mostly men. Uh, and again, men played a, a large role in that. But like traditionally and societally in the 1910s, all the way through kind of up into the 1920s, uh, that was the, the, the case. That's going to change a little bit, though. And we're going to be looking at this aspect of how the war actually does change this idea of women during the 1920s. Uh, so we're going to look at um, the war on women, um, and then we're going to go into uh, the right to vote, and then we're going to go into a scenario which uh, took me a lot of work, but I, I think it's going to be kind of cool in the sense of like getting different answers and being a little bit more engaging on the topic matter. Um, so let's do this. So... When it came to women in the, in the war, right, as we had learned before we left um, and when, when we were doing uh, World War I specifically, um, women found an enormous amount of opportunity during the war itself to show that women were intellectually um, powerful, uh, which was like a propaganda in which uh, many traditionalists uh, within the society at the time were trying to portray, like, well, you can't give women the right to vote because uh, of um, they don't go to school as much as a man and they wouldn't know the issues of politics. That's completely and utterly false, right? Um, as, like, uh, I think we, we watched a clip last year, Abigail Adams saying, um, does, does a woman not um, live politics on a daily life, right? Like even walking down the street in general, just being a citizen in the United States, um, your, your 
you're being affected by politics. So the idea that um, that women had to prove this um, is obviously for 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 many women today extremely insulting and actually pretty shocking, um, and and rightfully so it should be um, because women in general way before this were were some of the most progressive and um policy pushing citizens in the united states we had suffrage uh suffragettes who supported abolition of african americans bef before even people like lincoln were talking about it right so we're talking about like this is an issue uh that women were not only just passionate about but they were passionate about other progressive ideals and ethos and philosophy in the united states and world war one provided an opportunity for them to be able to show that they can enter the workforce and just be as good as men they can um fill the gaps that men uh, aren't there because of war and show that not only can they do the job of men but they could do better jobs than men on certain occasions, right? So 1 million women, right? Remember, like beforehand, traditionally, women were not going to the workplace as much as men. But when men are often fighting in, in the Western Front, 1 million women come into the workforce and they support the war industries that were dominated by men. And they are, like they will be in World War II as well, um, the backbone of the United States military without the efforts of women and this is this is absolutely has been documented especially in world war ii world war one it has been documented and more information is coming out without the application and the push from women to fill these jobs the military of the united states of america and its war capabilities in europe would have not existed it would not have actually pushed the United States military to being the dominant force in which it can it, it became really in World War One kind of but World War Two without a doubt. So it's an extremely important role and it's something that um, a lot of times his in history classes are not emphasized. So I'm emphasizing as much as I can. Um at the same time though, some of these women are in the workforce, many other women are saying, look, that that's great that you're in the workforce, but What's going to happen when those men are coming home? Are we going to get this right to vote? In which we've been fighting for for hundreds of years. And these women are are protesting. And they're protesting in front of the White House. Um, many of them were arrested under the laws in which we talked about. The Espionage Act. Um, the um, Sedition Act. Many times women were, were suppressed, actually, when they were trying to fight for their own rights, to, for the right to vote under the Sedition Act itself. Uh, and they're using the same language that Wilson's using, right? So when we talked about Wilson, like internationally, we're like, oh, Wilson's got a pretty good idea. When we talk about domestically, though, Wilson was not originally listened to women at all, disregarded them whatsoever, did not believe in actually the ideals that women should have the right to vote. Um, but women pushed him and women actually pressured him. So how does it come about, right? As the progressive movement, again, one of the things that I want to emphasize is that like while the progressive movement was like unit two, and as I emphasize when we are together, you know, the, the progressive movement is and the units are really kind of blended in together, right? And I'll show myself on the screen. Like you have like a unit two and then you have like, um, you know, like the World War One unit, like they blend together with the with the idea that like the the timeline keeps going, right? So in regards to this, the progressive movement, um, you know, is gaining momentum because it, this idea of like, we, we deserve more. And that's why we're going over to Europe because the world deserves more. We're fighting for the world. The idea was like, well, that's great that you're fighting for the world, but are we fighting for home? Are we fighting for the domestic rights of people at home? And that's the, that's the argument that women have. So uh, many of them are lobbying lawmakers, they're organizing marches, they're delivering speeches for uh, winning um, uh, the right to vote. Women were actually on hunger strikes, as we learned during the progressive era, we went out, I'm not going to go into it as well, um, but I will reference it, that they were force-fed for their right to vote, right? So for my 
awesome, powerful, intelligent women right there that are listening to this, that are that that are going to be women that are going to be able to vote. Remember, people fought for that vote, and actually, people starved for you to vote. So, all of this, and all that effort, and all that pushing, and all that hardship, and 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 torture, right, and physical violence upon women. Granting them the 19th Amendment, which was ratified August 26, 1920, and he gave women the right to vote. More than 8 million women vote on the first chance that they can get on November 2nd, 1920. 8 million. So, like, one of the arguments for the not having women the right to vote was like, well, women, they'll get the right to vote, but they'll never vote. Uh, that, like, totally smashes that idea. The idea of, like, well, women are just not interested in politics. Totally false, totally propaganda, totally, absolutely um, destroyed that argument based off of the 8 million women who come out and vote during that election. It is a huge accomplishment. And uh, it's a big moment. And it still uh, is a huge moment within our uh, nation, which was celebrated uh, and is being celebrated in 2020, right? Because a hundred years since that women have given the granted of uh, uh, granted the right to vote, and it's a gigantic moment, um, and I, which I we really should emphasize um, in this class. So uh, what I want you to do is this: um, we're going to look at what the deal. So now that women have the right to vote, and um, World War One is over, what does life look like? for different women in the United States. Now, here's the thing. This was very difficult to do, so follow me along step by step. Today, you're gonna look at five different stations that are pictures, graphs, and images, and um, text. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna be assigned a role. You're already assigned a role, and all you have to do is click the assignment, and then you're already in the role. I split up the roles, by uh, these three roles that I'm going to show you already throughout the class. Some of us are going to be a 19-year-old woman who left the farm, moved to New York City to experience big city living, and you are a secretary, right? And going through the five stations, how do the five things, right, that you're reading about affect you and your character, okay? Meaning you are a 19-year-old woman, who came to New York City, how do the five stations affect you? Some of us are a housewife in a big city whose husband is a stockbroker. You live in a nice apartment with two young children. How do the five stations affect you? And some of us are a women, woman living in uh, a farm on Iowa, right? How does the five stations affect you? So let's look at the assignment specifically so I can show you. So here we are. This is our assignment, right? Uh, and we're going to go down. And this is for women who are a uh, woman who is living on a farm, right? This is your character role. That's how you know which character you are. It's also the in the assignment name too. So here's station one, which is the 18th Amendment, which is, again, um, the idea of prohibition. And prohibition, as you're going to read, means that uh, alcohol is prohibited outright, okay? So we have actually right over here, uh, we have uh, two different women actually at the time during Prohibition. And we have Station 2, the 19th Amendment being passed for women the right to vote. Okay, uh, Station 3, about the middle class right over here. Station 4, about flappers. Who are flappers? Here's actually a picture of a flapper, right? Um, you'll have to read actually the text itself. I am not asking you to annotate the text. I suggest you do it because it's going to make it easier, but I'm not telling you you have to. And station five, which is this image right here, which is a graph. Now, you have to come down here to the graphic organizer and you have to go through it. So station one, 18th Amendment. What was it? How does it affect me, the character, and explain why? Use evidence from it. Now, I will make this clear. This is a two-day lesson. So do not tell me you didn't have time for this when it's a two-day lesson okay so again 18th amendment how does it affect you the character 19th amendment how does it affect you and your character consumerism which is actually again talking about the middle class how does it affect your character what is it and explain the evidence from the evidence 
employment, women actually getting the, uh, the right to work, and flappers. How does it affect you and your character? So I don't want it to be like, this is 2020 and it affects me. I want it like, this is my character, the 19-year-old in the 1920s, and this affects it this way and this way. Okay? Great. Have a great day, guys. Two-day lesson. Bye.